What's up everyone? I'm at San Pedro Square in downtown San Jose at Plant Slot with Natalie and today they're going to show me how to uh, do some, make some soil for plants yes. and how to re repot some plants and how to groom them. And exactly, exactly. Like Just some basic plant care that's really good for all the plant lovers out there to kind of have in their back pocket. And yeah, this is our store. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. And Thank like, you. I was walking down here and I was like, wow. Because I just got an apartment and I didn't have any plants in there. And it just adds this dynamic to your apartment mm -hmm. that just, you got to have some plants. Yes. It it's definitely brings some life to the space, in my opinion. And some good energy as well. That's always what I tell people. And I love that your plants are like indoor plants that like can be kind of in the shade. And they don't need yeah. like direct. Because... In my apartment, there's not this like, a lot of direct exactly. sunlight. Yeah, I always tell people they actually a lot of them don't like being in direct sunlight because they'll burn <laughs> and shrivel up. So better, better suit situation for the uh -huh. indoor plants. Yeah. And so, what do we got here? What is coconut <laughs> core? Cocoa coir. Yes. So this is. I actually do believe it's coconut husks, and then this is what we use as the base of the soil. So it actually makes like the dirt part of it. Um, so this is how I start. Oh, so that's just chopped up coconut? I believe it is. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> and you could also use peat moss, but they say cocoa coir is a more sustainable alternative. Does it have like a certain type of nutrient or something in that that makes um, it? It has like the water retention that the plant that's important for the plants. Okay. Um, and then we add the nutrients separately, actually. So we add the worm casts. <laughs> castings which is the worm poop and then that's the nutrient part of it um, and that's the part that kind of gives the plants their food basically and so we're gonna be replanting succulents right yeah so is this specific for succulents or can you use this type of technique for like say for like this plant or something that's an amazing question actually so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make like a base soil and then the succulents, because they like their soil really chunky, because they don't like to sit in water, I'm gonna add extra, like, I'm mean, just in their little pot, I'm gonna add extra um, aeration. So that will help them. Okay. But this is kind of like, I make like a base one that will work for most plants, and then from there, I can be like, oh, this plant likes more water, so I'm gonna like, so, leave it as is. Or, oh, a plant likes, um, they, they like to dry out faster, so I'm gonna add more aeration. So the coconut husks and the worm poo, yeah. These are these are like the foundational piece that, that you can use this for any plant to build like Exactly. Okay. Yeah. 100%. Do you need me, do you want me to mix this up somehow or something? Yeah, let me I'm just going to go for it. So I think the ratio that I kind of eyeball it, but I think the ratio is like one like one part um coconut husks. Coconut husks and then like oh. you want to add like yeah. One to three, I think, with the um, worm castings. You don't want to overwhelm them with, overwhelm the mixture with the worm castings, but you still want to have a good amount. So like, so it's gonna one part coconut husks and then one third of what you added in. <laughs> yeah. Is that what? It? Yeah. Okay. I know people always ask if I make my soil, and I'm like, I just eyeball it. But I think it's something like this. So it's almost like half and half, except for it's a little bit less. Worm casting. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, I think any week just eyeball it and be like, you know what? That's good. I don't think it, you're going to like direly mess up if you add too much or too little. Uh huh. Um, just going to clean it out. And this little, like, this catcher pan, you, you sell yeah. these here. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool because, you know, like when you're doing this kind of stuff at home, it, like, you get dirt everywhere, especially on my yeah. porch. That's what I've been using lately is my porch, but my 100%. porch is just like has a bunch of dirt on it. So having one of these like really helps. It's a lifesaver. It's actually called a repotting mat. Um, and then it keeps the dirt, especially because we picked white furniture, um, <laughs> which is beautiful, but it's not the best for dirt everywhere. And like I constantly have dirt under my nails. I'm like, probably have on my face right now. Like it just gets everywhere. So. Just whatever I can use to help me stay clean, I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> then we go in with pumice, which is basically just little rocks. And when you look in the soil and you see the little rocks, this is what it is. This or perlite. Um, what is that made out of? It's literally just rocks. Oh, it's pumice is the rock. Yeah. It's a highly porous natural material. 
<laughs> used in garden soils for drainage. So because yeah. you can use pumice rocks, don't you use? Isn't that the same rock that you use to get calluses? That's what it's called too. Yeah. Okay. Pumice rock. And I think this might just be like little itty bitty peep itty bitty bits of that um, and it helps because the biggest concern with the house plants is that they're going to rot so this helps it so that the roots aren't just sitting in soil that's just soaking wet for you know weeks at a time it helps it dry up faster because there's that separation and you're adding a little bit more in this mixture because we're yeah we're planting and you succulents can, exactly and you can always add more as needed i'm constantly switching like up my mixture i don't just like make it and I'm like, I'm done. Like I keep the ingredients with me so that I'm like, mm, this plant, you know, I'll tailor it to the plant. I've also seen people like use like little clay balls. You ever seen those? Oh yeah. Those are the Lekka balls. Uh -huh. it, it, I think they are just clay balls, um, which you can use. And I think, I mean, I love when I get a plant and they have those balls in it because it adds, it helps so much with the um, aeration. I think you have to boil them just to cleanse them off though before. So it's kind of a pain. A little bit extra wear, but probably worth it. They probably hold a little bit of moisture in them too, like when you like you add the water, and you know oh, what I mean. Oh, right. Because there's this one thing I was seeing that there's like these, like I think they call like Mexican clay pots. You ever seen those? Is it just terracotta? I well, don't know. I, well, they they take they make these clay pots, and then they'll dig a hole in the ground next to the plant. Put the water, put the water in that clay pot, and since the, the clay pot is kind of porous, it will slowly seep right. out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's the terracotta material. Like this is painted terracotta, but you can see the inside. It's the orange um, terracotta, and it soaks up the water and helps the plant. It helps with aeration, and it um, helps the plant stay a little moist as well. So it's really, really good. It's a, an amazing um, material to put your plants in. And it's also pretty affordable, so we love it. And then you can paint on it and make it really fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, that looks like like uh, the already pre-made dirt that you buy. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then we're gonna add even another ingredient that I recommend. It's not totally necessary, but it helps a lot. It's just bark. Bark. Orchid bark is what they call it in the stores. And again, more aeration. Really good, especially if you're doing succulents. The succulent soil will have bark in it. I'm interested in seeing how this goes into like these little teapots because these are some big chunks. I probably will have to break out the, <laughs> the big ones and just use ones that are smaller, but that's also a very good point. What is the orchid? It, you said good with aer aeration and. Yeah. Uh, so it like kind of holds a little bit of more moisture in the soil as well. It helps the moisture actually like basically dry up faster. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's really good. It's really good stuff. So and it's also really easy to make this. So we have coconut husk, worm castings, yes. pumice rock, yeah. orchid bark. Yeah. That's it. That's the magic formula. That's it. I'm gonna be extra and add my secret ingredient, which is mosquito bits. This um, kills gnats. You know the fungus nuts, those little flies that fly around and they're like uh -huh. super annoying. Oh wow, I've, yeah. I've been experiencing this. Yeah, it, it, they're really common. If you have houseplants, you're probably going to deal with gnats at one point, but get yourself this and then you could either um, mix it into your soil how I'm doing now and just kind of hide them. Or you could let them soak in your watering can and then water your plants and then it, it basically when they get wet they release fungus gnat killer. I don't know what it what? is, but it's supposed to be organic and non-harmful to pets and humans. And that's also very important it's, to me. It, it's organic? What is it made out of? I don't know what it's made out of. It's made out of something called B... God, I know. I don't remember. Mosquito bits. Mosquito bits. They work. You probably don't want to wash your hands after using it, but I, I've looked into it before and... Um, oh yeah, it's B-T-S-I. I'm not going to attempt to say because it's a very long <laughs> name, but they work. That's and awesome then, to know. Like, yeah, yeah, I've been experiencing little like little mats, and I'm like, how the heck do I deal with this? I'll give you some. I'll give you some, and you can use them. Just soak it in some water. And then if you want, you can also help me out by treating some plants. This right here is something called Pure Crop One, an organic pesticide. And you can just spray it if you want wipe it down with some paper towels okay. and this also kills um the other pests like mites or um 
mealybugs, like little spiders, what aphids. Like, there's a bunch of different ones that can attack the house plants. Mm. Um, Do you sell this here? Annoying. I sell they don't. I want to sell, that's on my list of things to start selling. <laughs> we have kind of a tight space as you can see in here, but uh -huh. I get asked about it so much and I just tell people like preventative treatment is key. So it's my spray it and then I wipe it. Yeah, or you can even spray it on the towel and just wipe it like that. Okay, and do I do I wipe it over the whole leaf yeah. or do I just, I just need to kind of spray it in here a little bit? You can do it over the whole leaf, okay. top and bottom. What kind of plant is this? Peace leaf. So these are the lilies that grow and they're very beautiful but they don't last super long. So this helps with pests and it helps with mold. Yeah, pests and mold, that stuff is really good for that, which is super common to experience. I mean, if it happens to your plants, you're not a bad plant parent by any means. It's just something that happens. Like the bugs will come in, some houses I think are more susceptible to it than others. Um, or you could even get a plant that maybe they have eggs in the soil that weren't caught by the seller or something like that. Something could happen. Um, that's why preventative treatment is key. Like even, I don't see a problem with that plant, but we're preventatively treating it right now just to make sure that if in the future, like and basically when this plant goes home with their customers, I'm guaranteeing that it is happy. And if it's not, like we'll make it right, right away. But how often should you do this? Um, if you're doing it preventatively, like I would just say weekly would be enough. If you have, if you have an actual infestation, you want to do it daily. Okay. Or as recommended on, on the package. Okay. Our soil is mixed, which is great. See, it was super fast and very easy. And then what we're going to do... We're gonna take our succulents, which are already very dry because they sit outside and they today's their watering day. Um, and that's when you wanna repot the plants, is when they're dry, because they pop right out of the container. Versus if they were wet, it would just basically be like mud everywhere. <laughs> um, and then you wanna find the root system in there. So you wanna clean off the old dirt. This, this one, one has some roots, but we're gonna get a better one because it's kinda of grad. <laughs> okay. There we go. Is there anything you, you, you want to avoid when you're doing that? I mean, it depends on the plant. These succulents are so hardy, they're going to be okay. If it's a plant that has a more delicate root system, like um, the trailing pothos plant, believe it or not, can be a more delicate root system. You can wear gloves just to be safe or make sure you have clean hands before you do this. Um, and then they kind of, the technique is called kind of just massaging the roots to get the old dirt and to make sure that when you repot it in the new dirt that the roots aren't like all bound to each other you so that way they'll naturally kind of spread out and um, expand to the new dirt allowing for the new growth and then now i'm going to just take my super we're just going to put it in these teacups really small space all the same so how long have you been and San, San Pedro Square. How long have you been open? Like around two months. Were you doing this before? Like, you were, were you like selling plants out of your house? Um, we would sell at markets, but we would store all of the plants at our house. Yes. Yeah, so we literally <laughs> like it was just cr it was a jungle. It was a crazy jungle with so many plants all the time, all over the floor. <laughs> Which it was a vibe. Like people would come over and be like, Oh my god. Because we would buy like hundreds of plants and then just find space for them, like on the floor, and like make a little plant corner and uh -huh. um, care for them that way. And then we would transport them to the markets, drive them around all over the Bay Area from like San Francisco to Santa Cruz, pretty much and everywhere in between. Which was fun. I met so many people, and like my favorite part is getting to work with other small businesses. That's how I found so many of the products that I sell at the store. Like for example, these pots, I was just in a market and I was like looking across to me and he had these pots on display, this artist. And I was like, are those for sale? Like they're amazing. And he was like, nope. And I was like, well, if you ever put them for sale, you know, I might want to sell them in my store. And so he reached out and he was like, hey, like if you're down, I'm down. And um, Speaking of <laughs> pots. Oh yeah. 
Look at this provocative pot. That's what they should call them, provocative pots. That's a good name. I would call it Full Moon Planter. <laughs> and then on the other oh, side. <laughs> Those are a very Wait, good yeah, that, Let's see. Are they? <laughs> oh, the, the <laughs> What type of plant is that? Well, um, this guy right here? No. Oh, um, oh it's called a jun Juncus <laughs> Spiralis. So, I have the name right on here. Juncus Spiralis. It's like this almost curly grass. Ooh, yeah, I know. It's, it. it's awesome. And it's pretty I easy to care. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> we just had an Okay. And so pretty much I just repotted this one so fast. It was so easy. We've kind I think of I got all these, these leaves wiped down. See, and it looks shinier and prettier, right? Yeah. It almost looks fake now because of how, like, the shine that it has Yeah, that to. person came in here earlier and was like, are these plants real? I, I get asked like so much. I'm like surprised sometimes. But I think it's a compliment. I'm going to take it as a compliment. So that's amazing. But, um, so it's kind of like a two in one. Treat your plant for pests and clean leaves at the same time. It's when the leaves have dust on them, they actually don't absorb the core, the sunlight as easier. And so then they won't actually grow as much when the leaves are dusty. How do you feel about cutting dead leaves off? Uh, 100%. I think I think yeah. as soon as you notice that a leaf is starting to turn yellow, which is a normal, totally normal process, as the leaves mature, the older ones naturally just die and new, some new growth can come. Um, and I would recommend cutting them off as soon as possible because the plant will continue to waste its energy on that dying leaf instead of focusing its energy on new growth. Um, so cut it off. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Cut it off. <laughs> Even if I wasn't sure uh, I do, you know, but or, I wasn't sure yeah, if I shouldn't. Yeah, even if it's a leaf you just personally don't love, you don't like the look of it, there's no harm in cutting it off so it can focus its energy on you and your use. Mm -hmm. But there we go. Wow, Our cute the, little succulent and a cute little teapot that we just thrifted. And, and you sell these succulents in the teapots? Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. We sell them without the teapot or with the teapot. What is the advantage yeah, of the mixing in the dirt instead of, because you can, you can buy dirt that's already. Yes, you definitely can. Um, I've just had some bad experiences with it, buying pre-made dirt. I think, it's, I think it's, to be honest, when I can find a good dirt that I use it for, it's organic. It says house plant specifically. It has no wedding agents. Sometimes, like soil, your friend at the big box store has wedding agents. You can just read the ingredients, and um, it basically can lead to mold, moldy soil, really fast. It might be better for something like a fern, something that really loves water. We're already making sales with our freshly oh, talking yeah. supplement. But so it, the advantage is, is that you know exactly what's in it. You know it, exactly what's in it. It's more natural. It's just a very simple. Um, I can buy it like bigger bags and make like, a bunch of different batches of soil versus me buying one bag. I go through those so fast. When I oh, yeah. Bags. And since this needs more aeration, you're able to make that custom different. make it. Yeah, exactly. And it's probably cheaper too, right? I, sold it. Um, I think it would be, if, especially if you're buying in bulk. Okay. For sure. I didn't make a <laughs> <laughs> if you're buying in bulk, for sure. It's a hit. You should do it more often. You should just set I know. up right here and just I know. do plant workshops. That would be so cool. Yeah. To be honest, I'm feeling more confident now after doing this with you because I've been thinking of, the, of doing plant workshops here, but I get so in my head and I'm like, I don't know anything about plants. Ugh. I, you, I do. Do you, <laughs> but, you have uh, products on your website? I do. Well, um, everything except the plants. Okay. I don't like shipping plants, but I can ship anything else. Uh -huh. and, and what what's your time? Like I, no, I, I usually it. stop by here and every time I stop by here you're open. Like even during like the weekdays and stuff. Yeah. We're open every day except Monday, Tuesdays. Honestly even Tuesdays I'll still come in and kinda of just open if someone lets me know that they want to stop by. Um, so Wednesday through Sunday, we usually open around 11 30, 12 to be safe. We'll say 12 to 5. Every day we'll definitely be here 12 to 5, but Sunday, Saturdays we're here until 6 30. Sundays we're here until at least 6, sometimes later. Okay. Yeah. And today I learned how to make my own soil by using coconut husks, worm castings, pumice rock. An orchid bark. Yep, and maybe mosquito bits if you want to be extra. Maybe, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then how to break apart the root ball and to replant your plants into this. And if you're going to do succulents, add a little bit more pumice rock because they need a little more aeration. A little aeration. more aeration, a little bit more bark, whatever you can find. That, and yeah. then to prevent pests and mold, use what is this? pure crop one. Pure crop one or neem oil is a more popular one. And if you don't like a leaf or it's dying, cut it off. 
That's fine. Hundred <laughs> percent. We 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 can't go through a lot today. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.